Hi, I'm Elle, and today we're going to be talking about the already controversial upcoming Morphe Fluidity Foundation release. As a disclaimer, I physically can't give my own opinions about the shade range because my visual impairment makes it impossible to tell the difference between different shades. I literally cannot do it, so I'll have to be taking other people's words on that one. Anyway, there have been a lot of scandals in the past about a lack of foundation shades, unless the people wearing the foundation shades can also hide in the snow naked. So when Morphe announced that they were releasing a full 60 shades to be as inclusive as possible, that was obviously a good thing. But because it's Morphe, there have been a ton of side eyes. The queen of Morphe herself, Jacqueline Hill, has obviously jumped in to say how great it is. Naturally. Thanks to Nick Snyder from The Viewer's Voice for the following clip. So this right here is the PR kit. It is huge, you guys. Like, I don't know if you can gauge how big it is sitting here on my island, but it's gigantic. Look at how beautiful this campaign and undertone that you could possibly think of. There's green undertones, yellow, peach, golden, even gray undertones. Like, it's incredible. And look at all of these beautiful faces on here. Look at this shade range, you guys. It's incredible. I am so proud of this brand that I have stood by for years and what they're doing, incorporating boys, incorporating all colors. Like, I am so proud right now. I, I could get emotional over this. Like, this is so freaking cool. That does sound really great. But did I hear that correctly? Grey undertones. I didn't even know that was a thing. And Kevin James Bennett doesn't think it's a thing either. Now, we should all know that Kevin James Bennett cannot stand Morphe or anyone that pushes the brand. So please bear that in mind. But on Instagram, he posted a picture that says, Grey undertone foundation? What a great idea, said no one ever. With the caption, Why is there so much misinformation about cosmetics circulating on the internet? Example, a former MAC makeup artist, Jacqueline Hill, is busy promoting grey undertone foundation to millions of stands on Snapchat. Hashtag newsflash, the only people with grey skin undertones are dead. Hashtag beauty influencers, do us a favour. Hashtag educate yourself before you start offering advice like an expert. Or leave the educating to the people who know what the fuck they're talking about. A little later, Kevin repeated his point with another receipt. Following that influencer's uneducated description of grey undertone foundations, still scratching my head, I thought you'd be interested to see how complexion shade developers view foundation undertones. And no, you're not seeing things. Adding yellow iron oxide lightens a foundation, adding red iron oxide deepens it. Including a picture of olive, yellow, neutral orange and red undertones. No grey in sight. When someone asked whether Jacqueline's comment about grey undertones might just be how our eyes see the colour, Kevin responded, you might visually identify a shade as being grey, but when an influencer describes it to millions of followers, it should be an accurate description using the correct industry terms. Picky? Maybe. But he does have a point, and according to him, grey skin undertones. This is not a thing. This is not a thing. <laughs> like, this is not a thing! But okay, Jacqueline just made a mistake, and maybe that's not the biggest deal ever. Let's get back to how she says the foundation performs, because that's obviously the most important thing here. Belinda sent me these products several weeks back, so I have been playing with them, and I will tell you that the foundation is a very matte and very, very full coverage foundation. I mean, like, if you've got acne, cystic acne, texture, like redness, rosacea, it is going to cover it. It is full coverage. Now, of course, you can bring the coverage back a little bit by using like fix plus a luminous like dewy skin mist which is what i do because i just like more of like a dewy look so it's really easy to kind of like play with the foundation and like manipulate it a little bit if you will um but if you're looking for a matte foundation that's full coverage this will be exactly what you want full coverage and covers all kinds of texture and blemishes that sounds good but it's always a better idea to listen to more than one review of an upcoming product let's see what let's say Manny MUA has to say about it. I wish it didn't dry as fast as it did, to be honest. Like, I just think it's kind of fast. But the coverage is beautiful. The consistency is really, really nice. Another thing, you guys, that I wanted to point out is that this foundation will pick up on your dry patches because it is more matte. And I can already tell, like, anywhere that's a little bit more dry, it is picking up and it makes your skin look a little bit more dry. 
but that's kind of the nature of matte foundation so it is what it is but i'm just wanting to you know give you guys all the tea if you guys have dry patches on your skin this foundation will probably pick up on it because it dries so intensely like i almost feel like i don't even need to set it with translucent powder it's very very quick <laughs> okay so we have the base completely finished so with everything combined put on the skin i have literally everything on now including with the powder of course the skin looks extremely dry let me do a little bit of setting spray to knock it off. You know what? Let me use the Morphe one. Hello. Okay, so we're going to use the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. I really, 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 really like this. Just to kind of take away the dry, powdery appearance. I just drenched my shirt. <laughs> Fucking idiot. I'm really inspecting here, you guys. So I haven't really gone in with a full-ass matte foundation in a long time. Just because I feel like with matte foundations, they just like fall into my pores really easily. And I'm noticing with this foundation, it's doing that right here. Like I can see my pores quite largely. Like they're big right here. I feel like with like mixed foundations, it doesn't give you that effect. But this one, I definitely, definitely notice it does. Also, my smile lines. The foundation's starting to settle in the smile lines a little bit. Don't love that either. Alright, so in Manny's video, we've learned that the sponge that came with the PR kit wasn't the best, that the foundation dries really fast, that his pores are really visible, as well as it showing up dry patches on his skin, and that he had to drench himself in setting spray after applying it and the new Morphe concealer to feel a bit better. It's weird that Jacqueline has apparently been playing around with the foundation, but didn't notice that it really showed up pores and dryness, which is, you know, texture on the skin that she claimed the foundation would cover. I mean, Technically, any foundation or even ordinary paint would cover texture if you just slap it on top of your skin, but that's really not the kind of review that makes a lot of sense. I know that Manny said that he was going to give a fair review too, and he did seem honest about some negative issues with the foundation, but we also have to remember that he has an affiliate code and is one of the main Morphe babes. So there's an obvious ulterior motive there that we'll have to recognise whether he likes it or not, especially when he reminds everybody about his discount code. But like I said at the beginning of the video though, I can't tell the difference between shades, so I'll have to look elsewhere for that. Nicole Concilio very helpfully took to Twitter to share a couple of videos with swatches from the new range. The first has the caption, What are your guys' thoughts? This is swatches of almost all the dark shades from the Morphe Foundation. So I just took the liberty of swatching all of the deeper shades in the Morphe collection. This is them. I know a bunch of you guys were requesting this, so I hope that this is helpful. There's no flash. This is what it looks like. A lot of people were very unhappy with those deeper shades, but there's the fair point that because Nicole's skin is so light in comparison, the shades might look weird on her skin and might be great for their actual intended audience. As a better example for swatching, Princess K took to Instagram stories to explain the shade range a little more. So the cool thing about this is not only is it a picture, but then you flip it around and you literally have all the levels of the foundation shades. So you are going to flip it around. There are five levels. In those five levels, there are 12 foundation shades per level. So that's equal to 60. Little math for you guys. So each level is broken down by light, medium, tan, rich, and deep. So we got, we got a range going for you guys, okay? So I had the opportunity, the pleasure to represent level four, which is rich. So I'm going to focus on that, but I'm sure the other models for this, the other ones who represent light, medium, tan, and deep are going to do an unboxing as well. So make sure that you go over and check out their IG stories or their YouTube channels. But I'm going to be focusing on the rich section, which is level four. She then went on to swatch all the shades in her range, as well as swatch the deepest shade in the whole collection. Is the deepest shade actually deep enough? Only time will tell. But Nicole Concilio then swatched some lighter shades on Twitter. Here is most of the light shades swatched of the Morphe foundations. My hand is a little stained from swatching the previous shades, so I'm assuming you have to blend this foundation fast so it doesn't dry. My hand is a little bit stained, but here are primarily the lighter tone shades, the lightest shades. We have some yellow undertones. So yeah, this is pretty much what we're working with. The staining really doesn't look great, but there were a lot, and I mean a lot, of comments comparing those shades to characters from The Simpsons. Morphe's Fluidity Foundation will be released on the 17th of January, so obviously all the comments and thoughts about the product are based totally on speculation. 
The shades might be great, the foundation could be decent. The problem is that Morpheus had so many scandals and there are so many rumours about who might have a real financial stake in the business that a lot of people are over the brand and are tired of it constantly being promoted by so many influencers on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. And because it can almost feel like we're constantly tripping over Morphe affiliate codes, it's tough to find a genuinely unbiased review from PR. But what do you guys think? Is it too soon for Jacqueline to start gushing about Morphe again, or do you think she's just genuinely happy with the foundation? Was Manny's review about the fluidity campaign fair? Are you excited to try, or are you really sick of Morphe? As always, like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, or don't do any of those things because I'm not your mother. And, as we say in The Sims, dag dag.